Arc Interiors Volume 71 is a beautifully designed, fully furnished apartment that includes everything you'd expect from a complete interior. A modern kitchen, a cozy living room, a functional hallway, a comfortable bedroom, and a stylish bathroom. The entire scene is fully modular, which means you can easily rearrange, replace, or expand different parts to fit your own project. It comes with over 160 ready-to-use materials, all carefully created to deliver realistic results straight out of the box. The project is available in four main formats, 3ds Max, with both V-Ray and Corona Renderer, as well as Blender prepared for cycles in V-Ray. If you only need the 3D assets, there's also a more affordable version that includes just the models. You can find all of them in our Evermotion store, along with hundreds of other interior and exterior scenes. Every single model in this collection has been crafted with precision and attention to detail, from clean topology through optimized geometry to properly unwrapped UV maps and high quality materials. Speaking of UVs, the entire scene has been mapped using a consistent texel density, which means you can easily swap materials without having to readjust their scale every time. All materials follow the PBR roughness metallic standard, making them compatible with today's most popular rendering engines. This ensures that what you see in preview is exactly what you'll get in your final render. Realistic lighting, physically correct reflections, and beautiful surface detail. If you're looking for more 3D models or complete interior scenes, make sure to check out our full collection on evermotion.org. We have everything you need to bring your visualizations to life. Let's start by taking a look at how the Corona Color Correction node works. It allows us to modify a texture's appearance, things like hue, saturation, and contrast, without touching the original bitmap. Now, let's switch to the interactive render and open the material editor. I'll grab the material from the sofa and connect a Corona Color Correction node. Here, we can easily adjust the hue to shift the overall color tone, tweak the saturation to control how vivid the colors are, and use gamma to fine-tune brightness or contrast. Everything updates instantly, so you can see the results right away. Next, let's move on to the carpet material. I'll add another Corona Color Correction node, but this time, I'll enable additional outputs and change the value from 0 to 1. This allows us to control several bitmaps at once using a single node, which can really speed up your workflow. In practice, this means we can quickly recolor a material and match its tone to the overall look of the scene a great way to maintain visual consistency without editing textures manually. Finally, keep in mind that saturation affects not only the bitmap itself, but also the tint color we added earlier. So you get full control over the material's appearance, fast, flexible, and all directly inside the material editor. Now let's move on to the Corona Multimap. It's a great way to add variation and make your materials look more natural and less repetitive. First, make sure to select Mesh Element under the Randomize By section. This tells Corona to apply a different texture variation to each separate mesh element. For example, individual planks, tiles, or objects within a single mesh. Next, click the Batch Load Textures button. This allows you to quickly load multiple textures at once, instead of adding them one by one. A big time saver when working with complex materials. Below, you'll find the options for Random Gamma, Random Saturation, and Random Hue. These controls introduce small variations in brightness, color intensity, and hue between each mesh element. When working with wood materials, it's usually best to stick to random gamma only. Adjusting hue or saturation can make the wood look inconsistent or unrealistic. A subtle gamma variation, on the other hand, helps to break uniformity while keeping the natural tone intact. Just be careful not to overdo the gamma randomness. Too much variation can cause uneven or patchy results. Finally, there's also the seed parameter, which lets you randomize the pattern at any time with a single click, making it easy to fine tune the look until you're satisfied. Used this way, the Corona Multimap gives your materials a subtle, believable variation that really helps bring the scene to life. Let's start by setting up the light mix with several HDRI at once. In this example, the maps are already prepared. Just plug them into the correct slots shown in the image. Finally, Let's rename each layer properly to keep the workflow organized. The first example combines Corona Sky and Corona Sun, a very flexible setup that allows you to achieve exactly the lighting you need. 
by moving either the sun or its target in the viewport, you can easily adjust the angle of sunlight and control how it interacts with your scene. Changing the size parameter lets you define the softness of shadows, which is especially useful for interior lighting, where a more diffused look often feels natural and realistic. You can also experiment with the intensity ratio between the sky and the sun to fine tune the overall contrast and mood of the image. Subtle adjustments here can completely change the atmosphere. The third example uses the original lighting setup from the scene. The photographic exposure was tuned for the specific HDRI. So when using other setups, remember to adjust the simple exposure. In this example, we'll focus on the gamma value in Corona Color Correction and the blur parameter in Corona Bitmap. These controls let you achieve similar flexibility with an HDRI as with the Corona Sky and Sun system. Just like in Lightmix, where we adjusted the balance between the sky and the sun, you can do the same here by changing the gamma value. Values above one make the sunlight softer and shift more light to the sky, while values below one make the sun stronger. To soften the shadows, increase the blur in the Corona bitmap, similar to adjusting the size in the Corona sun. As you can see, HDRI lighting offers the same level of control. And for a more atmospheric look, add a Corona volume material as shown in the image. It will brighten the shadows and create a warm, cinematic mood that fits a sunset HDRI. Moving on, rotating the HDRI map can drastically alter your scene's lighting. Finding the ideal value takes some trial and error, but it will improve your render. Experiment with a few versions, rotating the map in approximately 30 degree increments to discover the best orientation. When dealing with nighttime lighting, the most important aspect is creating the appropriate atmosphere. Starting from the HDRI map, you can subtly cheat by using light mix to tint the environmental light toward a cooler, more blue tone. When combined with the warm orange glow from interior lights, this creates a beautiful contrast that significantly enhances the overall look of the render. As you can see in this example, a small portion of the sky is visible through the window. There's no need to worry about it. Simply cover that area with another object to block it out. Final tip, avoid HDRI maps dominated by green tones. For example, from grass or vegetation. They'll cast a greenish tint on white walls, which looks unflattering. Lighting interiors with limited natural light may seem tricky, but it's actually simple. Just mimic reality with small adjustments. In this shot, there's only one window, so I added ceiling lights. Instead of one spotlight, I used two. One inside the lamp to fake the glass glow, and another IES light outside to illuminate the scene. This setup is faster and more efficient. When using light mix, it's a good idea to keep all the light colors in the scene white. This approach makes it much easier to adjust their color later directly in light mix without affecting the overall balance of the scene. Otherwise, as shown in the example, if your lights already have tinted colors, you may struggle to achieve the desired look. The colors can mix in unpredictable ways, making it harder to fine tune the lighting to your preferences. Also when using light mix, make sure the light intensity stay close to one. If the values are set too high, as shown in the example, they can create strong noise that can't be removed even with the denoiser. Keeping them balanced ensures a clean render, natural contrast, and more stable lighting control. Let's start with the default settings. In the common tab, set the resolution to 2560 by 1440. Under the scene tab, choose Corona High Quality Denoiser with amount at 0.65. The render time is limited by the noise level limit, set to 2%, and in the system tab, we keep high quality image filtering. With these settings and heavy displacement, the render takes about three hours. Now let's move on to the settings that can shorten the render time by up to 36 times. We'll start by increasing the render resolution to twice the original size. Next, under the denoiser section, switch to Intel CPU and set the amount to one. Then go to the render settings and limit the render time to just five minutes. Finally, under the system tab, change the image filter to tent. Five minutes might sound extremely short, and honestly it is, but as you'll see in a moment, the final result will still look surprisingly clean and detailed. Once the render is complete, copy the image directly from the frame buffer and open it in Photoshop. Here, we'll reduce the image dimensions by half. It's very important to choose Bicubic Sharper Reduction to keep the details as crisp as possible after resizing. Now, take a look at the comparison. 
The differences between the two renders are almost invisible. Yet the faster one finished 36 times quicker. This is a huge time saver. Give it a try on your own renders and see how much time you can save without sacrificing visual quality. Inside the Evermotion package, you'll find the post-production file in the same folder as the scene assets. If your render doesn't look right, load it exactly as shown in the video. Let's briefly look at how the post-production is set up. First, photographic exposure. It's perfect for scenes with multiple cameras. Each camera controls exposure through its ISO, f-stop, and shutter speed. If you're not doing animation, ignore shutter speed. If you don't use depth of field, ignore f-stop. So mainly, ISO defines the exposure. In Corona, changing ISO doesn't trigger re-rendering, which is super convenient. Next, ACES OT. This is a simplified fake ACES workflow. It makes highlights softer, whites less blown out, and shadows more natural. You can lower the value below 1.0 for a slightly brighter, more artistic look. Next, white balance. It quickly adjusts the temperature of the scene. Lower values make it cooler, higher values make it warmer. And finally, contrast. As the name suggests, it makes the image more punchy, but be careful not to overdo it. All right, let's add some people to the scene. Start by opening the Chaos Cosmos library and going to the People category. Choose a model that fits your scene. For example, someone sitting or standing, depending on your composition. After selecting the model, place it roughly in the desired spot. It doesn't need to be perfectly aligned. The most important thing is that it looks right from the camera's perspective. If you want the sofa to deform slightly under the person, you can use a simple trick. Add a volume select modifier, followed by a displace modifier. Adjust the strength until you get a subtle indentation. It's not a real simulation, but it works great for this kind of shot and adds a touch of realism to your render. Since we already have the shot rendered, I'll start an interactive render for a moment to highlight the area that really matters. When selecting the region, don't forget to include not only the character, but also the shadow it casts on the sofa. Even small details like that help the final image feel more realistic and grounded in the scene. Once everything looks good and you're ready for the final render, it's a good idea to add a C-masking underscore mask render pass. Assign the character to this mask so that in Photoshop or any other post-production software, you'll be able to isolate it easily. It's a small addition to the workflow, but makes the entire process much smoother and more flexible. Now it's time for Photoshop and a bit of AI. Open your main render, the character, and the mask you saved earlier from the frame buffer. Next, copy the character render and move over to Magnific AI where we'll enhance the realism of our character. In my case, using the subtle preset gave the best results. It keeps the details natural without overdoing the effect. Once it's processed, download the file and go back to Photoshop. Now all that's left is to paste the enhanced character into your render and apply the mask. Thanks to the mask we saved earlier in Corona Renderer, this step takes just a moment and you'll instantly get a much more realistic result. The final step is to animate our image and bring it to life. Open your browser and head over to Kling AI. You can simply drag and drop your render into the window or paste it directly and write a short prompt describing what should happen in the scene. For example, how the character should move or what kind of atmosphere you want to achieve. After a short moment of processing, Kling AI will generate your animation automatically. And that's it. In just a few minutes, you can add realistic animated characters to your renders and give your static shots a completely new level of depth and realism. To sum up, Arc Interiors Volume 71 is a truly powerful collection. It includes 19 cameras, four scene formats, and over 270 models, all available in FBX, OBJ, and USD formats. With so many renders to manage, it's best to take advantage of batch rendering in 3ds Max, which lets you quickly and easily choose which cameras to render and at what resolution, saving tons of time and effort. And that's it. Good luck with your projects and happy rendering.